Ping is a command line tool that you'll use commonly to test reachability. You want to know if a device is available on the internet or if you're able to communicate to that device, you can use the ping command. Ping will also tell you other statistics, such as round trip time. When you send a packet out and you get a response back, it measures the timestamp and it will tell you just how long did it take to get that packet from one side of the network to the other. It uses a protocol called the Internet Control Message Protocol, or ICMP. So you want to make sure that if you want to use ping, that you're not going to have any devices between you and the remote device, that it will be filtering out these ICMP packets. Ping is one of those tools that you'll use all the time. It's the first thing you try. If you can't reach a website, maybe you'll try pinging it to see if you can actually communicate from one side of the network to the other to make sure that perhaps there's no network problems in between. We even use it as a verb. Did you ping the host? Make sure you can ping that device and get a response back from it. Ping was written by Mike Moose in 1983. So this goes back quite a ways as a troubleshooting tool. And he wrote it as a way to emulate what Sonar does. When you send out a ping with Sonar and you're waiting to hear the reflection back, he wrote this utility to do exactly that. In fact, he said, had he known this would be such a popular utility, he probably would have put some different options and additional features in at the very beginning. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as an acronym. People say it stands for Packet Internet Groper. But in reality, it is not. Some people call that a backronym, where somebody has made an acronym out of it. It really is just the word ping. If you want to read about the story of Ping, one of Mike's legacy pages is at this URL. You can visit and read all about Ping the Utility and not Ping the Duck from the children's award-winning book. Every operating system has a utility to ping with, and it's usually built into the operating system. There's nothing extra that you'll need to load. Each operating system, though, and the version of ping that you're using may have different features available. So in the Linux configuration on my desktop, if I type ping, it will show you a number of those examples. And of course, in Linux, you can man to look at the manual for ping. And you can read through what the different options might be to be able to use that ping command. The most simple method of using ping in any operating system is just to type in ping and then the IP address of a device that you would like to try to get a response from. So I'm going to type in the IP address of my router on my local network, which is this private address of 10.1.10.1, and I'm going to hit Enter. And one of the things you'll see is that ping will tell you that it's going to ping 10.1.10.1. I'm going to control C out of this because it will keep going forever in Linux. It shows that the traffic that's going out is that it has sent 64 bytes from 10.1.10.1 using ICMP. And here's the request number of that ICMP. The time to live associated with this packet is 64, 64 hops. And the time it took to get a response back from that first ICMP is 0 0.794 milliseconds. And you can see as it's going through, it's giving us response times every time we send a ping. Well, that's local on my network. Let's try sending a ping out to another location. Let's go to 8.8.8.8, .8 which is Google's DNS service. And it's sending the same type of packet. But one thing you'll notice is that the response times are a little bit different and the time to lives are a little bit different because this is not on my local network. We've gone through a number of hops to get there, and the time to live decreased each time along the way. And the time to go across the internet to Google's DNS, the round trip was 30.1 milliseconds, 32 milliseconds. 28.7 milliseconds. It's 30 times longer to go out to Google on the internet as it was to go to my local router that's right here in my office. Also notice at the end of the ping command, it tells you the number of packets transmitted and the number received. And it tells you just how many packets were lost along the way. So you can set this running. You can walk away. You can come back and get a feel for how the network has been performing all the way through. This version of ping also gives me information about round trip time minimums, averages, maximums, and deviations. And you can see that my minimum was 28.728 milliseconds. My average was 30.093. My maximum was 32.014, which means our deviation was somewhere about 1.1 milliseconds or so. Now, the ping command itself, and ICMP in general, is one that has a very low priority in many network devices along the way. ICMP is usually used 
for tests like this. So if a device is very busy communicating and sending the normal type of traffic, it sometimes will drop ICMP or put it at a lower priority. So sometimes these responses and some of the round trip times are not as accurate as you might expect. But it does give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. And if you're trying to determine, is that remote device there or not, the ping command is the perfect utility to use.